Today I'm going to be sanding this beautiful painting and then I'm going to give it a final resin coating. You do not have to sand it if your previous resin coating is fresh. If it's from the same day, it doesn't matter. Even if it's the next day, it's not the end of the world. And I also personally believe that you do not absolutely have to sand it. But what it does is it creates a grip for the next resin coating. I am not the top resin artist expert, but I have gathered information and this is what the experts have told me. It is much better to sand your resin before giving it another coat, especially when it's older. Um, you could use 120 grit. I wouldn't use a 40. Today I have 80 because it's all I have with me today, but I strongly suggest to use 120. I don't think that it's going to make a huge difference, <laughs> to be honest, but even 150 is good. You don't have to sand it all down like a maniac and spend hours on this at all. I just make sure that I've sanded at least everywhere that I've covered the whole thing and you have to watch out for the edges here. Make sure that they are done properly. I have um, not sanded properly before and my edges showed through my fresh resin coating. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to go for this. Ooh, one more thing. If you're using a bin like I am, do not do this in your bin. Keep your resin area clean and away from this dust as much as possible. Now, I know it can be scary the first time you do this. The first time I ever send it, I was like, oh my God, this looks so pretty and I'm ruining it. But be strong and go ahead because the final result will be amazing. Now that that's done, I'm gonna clean out my space and I'm gonna show you something really cool. The next step is to remove as much dust as possible. So I'm gonna take some alcohol and some paper towels and you guys are gonna see Whoa, right? looks brand new while it's wet but then as the alcohol dries it's gonna come back to how it looked all scratched um, you could also use a blow dryer here and I think I'm gonna use a blow dryer because I have some natural crystals here and with all the scrubbing in there there's dust in there for sure so I'm gonna use my blow dryer also and then I'm gonna re-clean it again with the paper towels
The next step is to add some painter's tape around it. As you can see, this is a piece that I had already finished a while ago. And I'm just giving a touch up. And what's important is to really pass your finger on the side. Like you really want to make sure it's stuck there because the resin can go under inside the tape. It has happened to me before. So don't be afraid. Really go in there. Now I'm going to mix the resin. We put the hardener in first. For the sake of the video, I'm using the measuring cup, but I don't usually use it. So if you want to know how much resin you're going to need, there is an online chart where it will tell you approximately how much resin you need per square inch that you have to cover. Part A resin in second. You see how liquidy the hardener is? Well, the resin is much thicker. There we go. I have approximately 50% of each. Whoa, that drip just fell right into the spoon. How lucky was that? Now it says on the container um, to mix for four minutes but I like to mix it until it's ready. I do not look at the time. And I've learned this in time by mixing resin. Every brand is different. Some will tell you to mix for five minutes. Some will tell you to mix for five, then transfer into another container and mix again for four minutes. This one, it only says to mix for four, but it's not enough, I find. I find that I have to mix it for more and you don't want to go too quickly and stir like crazy because you're going to create a lot of air bubbles. We don't want air bubbles. And it's also important to scrape the sides every once in a while. So you mix a bit like that, scrape the bottom, go really down and then the sides. And it takes time you guys, this is like the longest and most boring part of resin is preparing it. And if you do not do this properly, you will not get a perfect, nice, clear result. And my resin is ready to go. Now it's super warm today. It's 28.5 in my home. So the resin took less time than usual to become like ready actually. In winter when it's cold, I mix for much longer and I seriously see the difference. It took like at least one minute less. Everything is perfectly clear in there, so I'm good to go. Now, because of my crystals in the middle, I'm gonna do it separately. I do have a lot of resin, but that's what I like. I like having a lot. Now, there are all kinds of um, tools that you could use to spread it out, but I don't really see the use in dirtying something else, you know? When you can just go in with your fingers, it's so much easier and you don't like ruin something else. Now I'm going to use that resin for another project. I prepared a lot more than I needed, but I don't mind that at all. So the resin will level itself out on its own. As long as you've 
spread it everywhere that there's some everywhere and then what I like to do is I pass my finger all around it to make sure that there's resin all around. I forgot to mention that there's a lot of people that put their tape on the sides so that the resin is only on the top but that's an option also you guys. You can put your tape up to the side rather than just underneath but I absolutely want resin all around on the sides absolutely that's my thing so there we go that was it then i remove my glove Zuh. don't need both of them and i torch now you have to torch quickly. You don't want to burn the resin. So you just have to pass on it. Just like that. You don't stay on it. As long as you go on it, boom. I do the sides first, always. That way it heats them and the resin will go down straight and stay flat on the side. And then only once all over. You do not want to over torch it. You do not want to continue torching more than this. You will ruin it. You could ruin it. I have ruined so many. At this point, let it go. Wait 10 minutes, set everything aside and come back in 10, min 10 minutes to redo the exact same torching that I just did. Okay, so it's been 10 minutes. I can go in for my second one. What I've learned from someone who's really, really good at this, she once told me to let the resin do its thing. Just like I do in my fluid painting when I say less is more, less is more with resin also. Don't overdo it. Don't over torch it. Just let it do its thing. And it's when I realized that, that I stopped almost completely stopped ruining my resin coating. So this is um, 45 minutes work time, which means I have more than enough time to go in there and remove any little pieces that I've seen. I do have a cat. And during the 10 minutes that my camera was off, I experimented on the other side there. So there's been a lot of air movement. So some small things have fallen. The best way, you guys, is natural daylight reflection. Nothing beats it. Oh, that was a mega cat hair there. And that is it. I am done. I'm going to close this and let it be. I will not reopen it until tomorrow. This is the next day and it is perfect. I can touch it now, but I'm still going to leave it for one or two weeks the resin takes much more time to fully cure. I'm gonna go for two weeks just to be sure. It's gorgeous. Hope this helped. Have a good one.